Welcome to Electronic Devices and Circuits Lab. In the today's video, we are going to learn uh, another experiment. And the objective of this experiment is to find out the slew rate of operational amplifier practically. So first of all, we can see this is the actual circuit that we need to implement to find out the uh, slew rate of the uh, operational amplifier. So here we can see this is our operational amplifier circuit and this is our positive terminal. Okay, this is negative. This is your non-inverting input and this is your inverting uh, input. So first of all, we have to implement this simple circuit, which is known as the unity gain amplifier. And after uh, that, we have to apply a certain input to this particular input terminal. So normally to find out the slew rate of the operational amplifier, which is a very important parameter, we have to apply the step signal, okay, unity step signal. So normally if we don't have the unity step signal, what we can do is we can apply the square wave of certain duty cycle. So in that way we have to apply the unit step signal, okay. And then we have to observe the output of this particular operational amplifier or this particular unity gain amplifier. So normally what we find is ki whenever we uh, apply any unit step input uh, of amplitude of V, okay. So this is not unit step. You, just, you can see that it is a step signal, but its voltage is V volt, right? This is our input signal that we have applied. So normally uh, this output uh, will not uh, uh, change certainly, but it will take a finite amount of time, okay? It will, it will not change instantly, okay? So it will take a finite amount of time to reach to this particular level because initially the input voltage is zero. Here you can see the input voltage is zero. This output will remain zero. And when we apply this particular signal, okay, when it becomes zero to a V volt, then it will take finite amount of time to reach to this particular voltage V volt, okay? And normally this slope, okay, this slope of this particular curve uh, will be defined as the slew rate of our uh, amplifier, okay? So what will be this slope? This slope will be, uh, here you can see it is a V output and this is time. So we have to actually calculate the uh, dV naught divided by dt, okay? So that will become the slope of this particular uh, uh, curve, right? So here we can see this particular circuit I have already implemented onto the uh, multi sim you have to conduct this similar experiment onto the breadboard also. So here we can see this is our op-amp. We are having two terminals. This is our inverting terminal and this is not inverting terminal and we have implemented the uh, unity gain amplifier. Here this uh, power we have to give, we have to give the minus 12 volt here and here we have to give the plus 12 volt, right? This is mandatory to give, right? And from this particular terminal, we are, uh, I'm giving this input uh, signal. So here we can see this. Uh, I have selected this is our function generator. I have selected the square wave. Okay. So I have selected the square wave of 100 hertz. And here this duty cycle I have selected as 50 uh, percent. Right. So here we can see this amplitude that I have taken. This is the V maximum value, which is 5 volt. So this week peak to peak will become uh, 10 volt. Right. So this way uh, I have set this all parameters for the function generator, right? Now uh, here you can see I have connected this oscilloscope. Okay, this is the two channel oscilloscope. Uh, we have to observe the output waveform. So this output is connected to channel one and this input signal for reference I have connected to channel B, right? So once if we execute this circuit, okay, we have to execute this circuit, right? After executing this circuit, we can observe both input and output signal, right? So there is a variation in the signal. Here we can see we have to adjust the time scale uh, properly. Okay, here we can see uh, some waveform is coming over there. Okay, here this waveform is clearly visible now. So now uh, we can stop it and uh, then we can uh, do our observation, right? So here you can see this red signal, okay? Here you can see this red signal which is connected to this uh, channel A. This is our output, okay? And this uh, uh, white color signal, okay? This color, okay? This is actually uh, our input signal, okay? So now uh, we have to select this time uh, scale properly, time sensitivity properly, and then we have to make this observation. 
So let me stop this first. Okay. So I have stopped it. And now I will be taking, I will be just zooming out. Okay. By selecting this particular time scale. So let me zoom it out so that uh, I will be able to properly observe this signal. Okay. So let me see uh, here. Okay. Uh, I have to further increase this time sensitivity so that I will be able to see this waveform properly. So now here you can see this particular waveform. Okay. Here you can see this red waveform, right? This waveform here you can observe clearly. Yes. Now, here you can see in this uh, particular output in the CRO. Okay. You remember that you need to have the CRO. Okay. So, here I have connected this output. Fine. And uh, at this point here you can see normally if you see uh, the voltage sensitivity of channel A. At the channel A, this red signal is connected. Okay. So I have not connected any uh, biasing. Okay. Here you can see this is Y position is at zero, right? So it is uh, symmetrically around your zero axis. This voltage will come symmetrical around uh, this zero axis, right? And uh, uh, just to uh, make it visible, what I did is uh, for this channel B where this input is connected. This is our input signal here. You can see this is white one is your input signal that we have connected. So I have just uh, given up uh, this offset of 0 0.2 volts so that it will be a little bit uh, uh, above this red line that you can see here, okay, because of this offset. If you make it zero, uh, it will get overlapped, okay. If you make it zero, here you can see it is getting overlapped, right. But just to uh, make it visible, I just... Uh, making this offset equals to 0 0.2 volt, right? So here you can see this is our input signal, okay? And certainly uh, from this uh, minus 5 volt, it is reaching to uh, plus 5 volt, okay? Minus 5 volt to uh, plus 5 volt. Here you can see this voltage sensitivity is 5 volt per division. But here we can observe that this output, okay? This output is actually not uh, changing instantly, okay? It is taking a finite amount of time and then it is uh, getting uh, stabilized somewhere at this point, okay? Even here you can see it is actually stabilizing at this point, okay? So it is actually stabilizing somewhere, right? So mainly this is the part uh, in which it is making a transition. This output is making a transition because it is a unity gain amplifier. Whatever be the input, okay? The same output will appear, right? When it is zero input, Okay, the red line was also zero when it is becoming as one as the input. Then here we can see that this is going towards one, but there is a transition phase from zero to one. So we have to find out this particular slope of this particular uh, output curve. Here you can see this is the same curve uh, you can see in this book. Okay, it is also shown over here. Okay, so this type of uh, waveform is actually observed, right? So here uh, we have to just make this observation in the CRO. We have to know what will be this time and what will be this time. Okay, so I have this two pointers. If you bring it here, okay, here you can see this voltage. Okay, you can see in the channel number one. So this voltage, you can see it is 4.971982. Okay, it is almost 4.998. Okay, so this value is uh, coming out as 4.340 seconds, right? Uh, here you can see if you make it, if you bring it here, okay, you can see this one, right? Okay, so now this has become almost uh, how much you can see this value is uh, coming out as uh, minus 4.99 volt, fine. So this way uh, we can have this onto this channel number one, we can observe this small variations, right? So you can find this value actually when you uh, see it in the uh, microseconds, okay, T2 minus T1, right? That time you will find that this there is a small variations. Here you can see this T2 minus T1, okay? So here you can observe that there is a small variation in the, uh, this time gap in between is actually 23.478 microseconds, so 23. 478 microseconds. Here it is shown as 4.340 seconds, 4.340 uh, seconds. Okay, it is in the seconds, it is uh, uh, visible. Uh, it is shown here, but uh, uh, if you see this T2 minus T1, this is coming out as 23.478. Okay, so this value is quite small, it is in the microseconds. And at the same time, uh, we can also calculate uh, what will be the uh, variation in the voltage okay so because it is 5 volt and this is minus 5 volt so we can calculate this variation will be of 10 volt so the same observation uh, i have noted down okay so let me 
show you this observation, right? So let me show you this uh, particular observation here, okay? So this is our uh, observation table for this slew rate, okay? So I have already noted down this value. So we have to calculate this dB by dt ratio, okay? So change in the voltage and the change in the current because we have to calculate the slope, okay? So normally we have to calculate the final value minus initial value. So final value was five volt, okay? Here you can see this is five volt and this is initial value was minus five volt, okay? So that value is you can calculate five minus five, uh, it will become plus five, so it will be 10 volt. And uh, here you can see this variation in the T2 minus T1, okay? It is 23.478 microseconds, right? So that value you can note down over here. So I have noted down this value is, is 23 microseconds, okay? So now we can calculate uh, this ratio dB by dt, okay? So slew rate will be dB by dt. So if you calculate 10 by 23, uh, this slew rate will be coming out as 0.43478 volts per microseconds, okay? So normally slew rate is mentioned in volts per microseconds, right? So that's why I have calculated this uh, ratio in volts per microseconds only, okay? So this is coming out as this particular 0.43473 microsecond. So just for your... Uh, 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 the sake of completeness, you try to see this uh, electrical characteristics of 74LM1, uh, this open. Okay, so here we can see this uh, uh, data sheet. Okay, here you can see at the bottom uh, this value of slew rate, uh, slew rate. Okay, so the slew rate here you can see at the bottom, slew rate is around 0.5 volt per microsecond. So even it is mentioned in the data sheet of your 74 uh, uh, hopefully, we have got almost uh, uh, the near about value, 4.434. Okay. Try to implement the same uh, circuit. The circuit is very simple. Okay, The only thing you have to do is you have to apply the, the square wave and then uh, properly you have to adjust this uh, uh, time. You don't uh, give very small input signals, okay? If you are giving a very small input signal in terms of magnitude, that time uh, this slope may be following the exponential law, okay? So please avoid of giving a very small values. Uh, it may be plus two volt or uh, more than that will be sufficient, okay? To get this particular result. So try to implement this circuit. If you have any doubt, uh, let me know with your comments. So thank you for watching this video.